Hello all, I'm Kaylin North, and today we're going to be doing basic strategy for the spirit Heart of the Wildfire. Wildfire is a very offensively oriented spirit, able to deal damage in its growth step as well as with its cards. And wildfire often can lead to quick victories, at least on low difficulties. With high difficulties, they can struggle a bit, although in multiplayer games they have a larger blight pool to work with, which helps mitigate the effect of their adding presence to the board, causing blight to occur. We're going to be playing this game on board B. Uh, boards A, B, and C all have similar strategies, while board D has somewhat different strategy. And so I'm going to focus on this one just so that we can get a better sense of what the spirit can do rather than looking at the board D strategy. If you want to see that, you can check out my speedrun guide. That one has some more information on what you might do for that situation. Invaders explored for start in the jungles. Uh, so with Wildfire, we really do like to, early on, before we've uncovered our second fire symbol, put presence in lands that are already blighted. So in this case, we get to go into land four and take out the explorer there without having to actually take an additional, without having to worry about putting additional blight there later on. I'm going to be focusing on a top track build for Wildfire. The two large decision points in Wildfire's build are going to be, do you focus on top track or bottom track? And the second point being, how soon do you focus on getting the second fire uncovered? I like the top track build, at least for low difficulties, because it tends to be a little more blight control-y. Uh, we don't have as much blight hitting the island. We can more easily let the invaders take a ravage undefended and then put a presence in afterwards to take advantage of the blight. Um, and so I often stall on putting my second fire down. I do want to emphasize, though, that sometimes it's worth putting your second fire down, even if it's going to cause a cascade or a flip of the blight card, because sometimes that just opportunistically lets you win the game. So turn one here, I'm going to go from the top track, go into land four, get some energy, and then I'm going to play Asphyxiating Smoke. Um, Asphyxiating Smoke is my favorite opening with Wildfire, uh, at least on not board D. Asphyxiating Smoke can probably take out the town in land 6 or 8, depending on where the invaders explore. And then it also tr lets us use Firestorm if there was still a target for that. Finally, it does let us push a Dahan, which if we hit land 8 with it, we can push that Dahan into 6 or 7 potentially to allow for future counterattacks. So I'm going to finish playing cards. Firestorm doesn't have a good target this turn, so we'll just burn it. Invaders build in the jungle and explore in the sands. So with an Explorer in the Sands, we're going to be able to, next turn, uh, deal with land 5 via Firestorm or one of our other powers. So I'm going to use Asphyxiating Smoke on land 8 just to solve it completely, and then with the Growth Phase, I'm going to take out land 3. So Asphyxiating Smoke, push it to Han. I want to push this to Han into land 6, actually. Get them spread out so that I can gather them up again later on when I place Presence. And then, uh, because I'm going top track, I am going to have a little more energy, and so I'm less inclined to take my energy spike at this point. And rather, I'm more interested in potentially cutting off land, or taking out land three by growing and gaining a new power. Uh, the other consideration here is that because we're going to be able to Firestorm land five, land eight is going to clear in the Ravage, and land six is the only inland town left, we can actually probably deny and explore by instead of dealing with land three, dealing with land six. The way we do that is we'd go ahead and place a presence and add our second fire. Um, because of the good opportunity to cut off an inland explorer, I'm actually gonna go ahead and do that rather than clear land three like I said I would earlier. And I'm going to do so still gaining a new power card to help extend our hand and then see what we get to hopefully help deal with land three. So we'll gain a minor power. Um, I, I really wish Elusive Ambushes worked here, but unfortunately it won't. Uh, we could get that and clear land three, but then we wouldn't have Firestorm to take out land five. And we really want to take out land five to cut off those adjacencies to land six and seven for either the Wetland or Mountain Explorer that's coming up next. Inflame the Fires of Life is a nice one for us. We could potentially take that, and it has both plant and fire. Um, but the Sacred Site targeting restriction is a little rough for us. We have a Sacred Site in the center of the board on land 5, of course. But 
getting a sacred site elsewhere is going to be a little more difficult, especially if we uncover our second fire this turn. Animated Rock Rut um, is, again, nice elements for us. Uh, the fear can be good. The wilds can potentially be good, although usually we want invaders to explore onto lands that we're in already because it's easy for us to destroy them, like in land 5. Poison Dew has good elements and could destroy an explorer, so uh, that might be the pick uh, just to try and take care of an explorer in land 1 if the invaders happen to explore the wetlands, uh, because Poison Dew then will trigger our Firestorm ability and let us take out land 5. Um, Otherwise, uh, in the absence of that opportunity, I would probably want to take Animated Rack Root just for the zero cost. But I'm going to take Poison Dew in this case because I think it's got a 50% chance of being really, really helpful for us. So then I will add a Presence, and I'm going to add the second Fire now in Land 6. And I'm going to push that to Han into Land 1, actually. Um, this way... Uh, land 1 has 2 to Han, so if we do grow there later on, we can push them into land 2 or something like that to set up a counterattack. And then I'm going to play Poison Dew, as we discussed. Um, Firestorm in land 5. And let's see. Seeking the Interior. Um, yeah, actually, we are on Seeking the Interior, so not local diaspora. So we're going to actually push a Explorer inland and... <laughs> Uh, solve the build in land 3, so that's actually really good for us. Um, then we get our beast to prowl, so I'm going to move that beast into land 4 to hang out with the explorer, and we don't get anything from the Dahan push. Ravage clears the inland, the wetlands explore, and the inland is largely clear, because land 6 didn't have the town anymore. And now we can go ahead and rather than continue down the top track like we were doing earlier we can actually just finish off the game i believe here um uh yes finish off the game here uh, pending no event whammy uh by going and growing into land two here from our bottom track so um actually do i need to grow from the bottom track i if i grow from the bottom track i can play flames fury and flash fires which is a nice little combo or rather, or more likely, play Flames Fury and Threatening Flames, which would let me push the Explorer from land 4 into land 3, where they will die in the Ravage, and then use uh, damage from Firestorm in order to take out the city in land 2. But we don't actually need to play both of those, so I'm going to go from top track instead of bottom track. We deal 2 damage, take a Blight, get some energy, play Threatening Flames, Firestorm finishes off the city, Threatening Flames pushes the Explorer back into land 3. And then the event gives the Explorer's extra health, which is fine. Um, the Beast gets to move to land 3, I guess. Keep following that Explorer. And we get an extra Dahan in land 7. Fear card doesn't matter here because the Ravage occurs and we win on the Ravage. So that's Wildfire. Um, they can get some pretty quick victories, as you can see there. Uh, often, they will flip the Blight card, um, or in larger games, they'll push you much closer to flipping the Blight card. We got a little fortunate there that we were able to place our second fire on turn two and still not flip the Blight card. Um, we didn't have to deal with any Cascades. Uh, we were able to... We had a pretty good explore pattern, basically, is what I'm saying. If you have any questions or comments on the video, please let me know in the comments section below or join us on Discord and let me know there. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good rest of your day.